Hi everyone, I'm Shailen here with Reedsy, and today let's talk about creating a magic system. A magic system is often central to a fantasy story, both to the plot and also to just the concept. It can be the most interesting or unique or attention-grabbing aspect of a fantasy book, but depending on the role you want magic to play in your story, you might have very different goals for how you want to construct it. Brandon Sanderson, a prolific best-selling fantasy author, has outlined three rules for creating magic system. And we're gonna take a look at all three of them throughout the video, along with some other tips as well. But we're gonna start with what he calls the first rule of magic. An author's ability to solve problems with magic is directly proportional to how well the readers understand said magic. We can group magic into hard magic and soft magic, although it really is more of a sliding scale. Hard magic functions in a more mathematical way. It has set rules and limitations and an understandable framework. A great example is in Sanderson's own series, the Mistborn series, where people ingest metal to do magic and burning through these different types of metals allows them to do different kinds of things. We have a very clear understanding of what different types of metals can do exactly, what kind of limitations there are, the effect this has on the magic user, and we basically know exactly what the characters are or are not capable of. A soft magic system, on the other hand, functions in a more mythical way. There aren't clear rules or limits, we might not even know exactly what magic does or how it works. It's based more around that feeling of wonder, that kind of fantastical feel, so instead of feeling like a science, it really does feel like magic. However, with soft magic, we can't really use magic to solve problems because that would lead to deus ex machina. When we haven't really defined the limits of magic, if we use it to solve a problem, it feels like a bit of a cheat because it kind of seems like magic could have done anything. In a soft magic system, it's better to use magic to create problems and then humans have to solve them, whereas in a hard magic system, we can actually use the magic to solve the problem. George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire is a great example of this. The magic in his world is fairly soft. We don't really know its limits or what exactly can be done with it. Magic causes problems for the characters, but it doesn't really solve them. Another great example of soft magic is Lord of the Rings. There is magic, but we don't really have clear rules or limitations on it. Try to explain exactly what it is Gandalf can do, how he can do it, and what the limitations are. We can't really, we don't really know, because it's a more soft magic system. So this is the first choice you want to make. Do you want your magic system to be a hard magic system or a soft magic system? And where do you want it to fall along that scale? If you want to use magic to solve problems, then it's likely that you'll want to use a hard magic system. If you want magic to cause problems but not solve them, then you might be able to use a soft magic system instead. Or of course, you might be better floating somewhere in the middle, like Harry Potter. We kind of know what characters can do and what their limitations are and what magic entails but in the grand scheme of things, there is always so much that we don't know. It's almost like a hard magic system presented in a soft way. You know, there are all of these limits that we're aware of, but in every book in the series we learn more, the magic grows bigger, and we're kind of aware that there's so much more that magic can do outside just what the characters that we're following are aware of. It's just one question, but it is a fairly important one to consider, and it will guide a lot of the future decisions you want to make about your magic system. So once you've decided around where you want your magic to be on the hard to soft magic system scale, here are some other questions that you might want to ask yourself at the beginning stages of constructing your magic system. Number one, this is just the basic, what can a user of magic do? What is the origin of magic in this world? Who can use magic? What or who allows them to use magic? Is magic genetic? Is it learned? Can it be obtained? How is it obtained? Is it gifted by the divine? Is it random? What is the cause or source or fuel of magic in this world? How does magic affect the user of magic? How does it affect the rest of the world? What are the limitations of magic? How can it be defeated? This last question leads us into Sanderson's second rule of magic which is that the limitations of magic are more interesting than the abilities themselves. The more limits and limitations you give magic, the more characters will be forced to problem solve and use their creativity and intelligence and ingenuity in order to solve problems. You put more limitations on the magic, you're forcing the characters to work harder, be smarter, you're also forcing them to struggle more, that means more tension, that means more conflict, that means a more interesting storyline. And the more limitations you put on magic, the more you avoid magic being used as a deus ex machina. So although it's very important to think about what your magic can do, it is equally important to think about what your magic cannot do. Here are some questions to ask yourself when trying to figure out what the limitations of magic might be. Does magic have any negative short-term effects on the user? 
long-term effects on the user, short-term or long-term effects on the world. What are the hard limits of magic? For example, a character with healing powers who can't heal themselves. What can a magic user simply not do? What external forces might affect or impede their abilities? Under what conditions can they use magic? Under what conditions can they not use magic? Does magic follow the laws of physics? What are their weaknesses? Do they have a fatal flaw, like a sort of kryptonite? Is magic difficult to use? How does that manifest? How does that feel for the magic user? Is it difficult to learn? Does it take a long time to learn? Can it go wrong? Can it be dangerous? Now remember that putting limits on your character's magic is gonna force you to be creative and problem solve just as much as it will the character. But don't be afraid of that. This is going to lead to stronger storytelling in the end. So the more you wanna use magic to solve problems, the more we wanna be very clear on what the limits are. Now before we jump into the third law, let's talk a little bit more about the actual world building. Let's look at the magic system itself. If you're using a more familiar magic system, how is it going to manifest uniquely in your world? For example, elemental magic is something we've seen quite a lot of times, but the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher, and Avatar The Last Airbender all took a very different approach to elemental magic. And the way they did that was putting hard limits and constraints and interesting ways that this magic could manifest on something that we have generally seen before. And remember, the more specific you make the limitations, the more original a type of magic we've seen before can be. You also want to think of the imagery. Magic is a great opportunity to include unique, interesting imagery in your work. So how does it look to use magic? How does it feel to use magic? Does it sound like anything? Does it smell like anything? Think of all the senses. Part of conveying magic system and building that system in the world is going to be conveying it through interesting imagery. And then we also want to think about society. Having magic as a part of society means that is going to be shaped by the existence of said magic. You don't want to think just about the magic system itself, but also what that means culturally. Is magic a secret? Is it widely known about? Is it used widely? Is it used selectively? Is it used only among royalty? Is it used only among upper class people? Is it used by everyone? Is it punishable by death? Is it a crime? Is it considered illegal? Do you need to go to a special school or academy to use it? Do you need to undergo a special type of ritual? Outside of the magical consequences and limits of the magic, what are the cultural or societal limits or consequences? What are the societal or cultural consequences of either having or not having magic? What are the beliefs around magic? Cultural customs, laws, religious beliefs, celebrations, lore, mythology, important historical events. If magic has been used on a day-to-day -day basis, how? How has it affected the everyday functioning of society? How are things like medicine, government, law, economy, food, war, affected by the fact that magic exists in this world? And finally, on the topic of world building, let's take a look at Sanderson's third law. Expand what you have before you add more. This means that rather than creating 700 different types of powers, you go really in depth on four different kinds of powers. Depth is more important than more. Complexity is more important than more. Doing a few things really, really well is more important than doing a lot, but it being a little vague. What's interesting about magic is how it can be used cleverly in the plot and also in the world building, not just that it's extremely expansive. Try to examine one thing from as many angles as you can before you add in another element. Sanderson's rule of thumb here is expand, don't add, which is probably good advice for basically every single element of writing. So start by laying out a fairly simple groundwork for yourself and then see how in-depth you can go. This can create something very complex and intricate for the reader, even if you're working off just a few basic ideas. This is probably going to be a better strategy than trying to create 17 different possible magic systems within the world. If it's too expansive, you'll lose track of it, the reader will lose track of it, and you won't really have the opportunity to use it as cleverly in the plot because there will be so much. So that's it for magic systems. Do you have a favorite magic system that you've read about? Thank you so much for watching, and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time!